A video game is defined as a game played by electronically manipulating images produced by a computer program on a television screen or other display screen. However, to many people in this world, video games can be something more. In 1958, a physicist named William Higginbotham created the first video game ever. It was called Tennis for Two, and it was played on an oscilloscope. What's an oscilloscope, you ask? This is an oscilloscope. People came from all over the world and stood in lines as long as the ones at amusement parks just to play this game once. Not to be confused with the game Pong by Atari, which would not be released until 1972, Tennis for Two was one of a kind. Because it was not mass produced, and because it was the only game played on an oscilloscope, many people didn't think of it as the first video game, and instead gave that title to the game Space War, which was created in 1961 by students at MIT, and that one was played on a computer. Nine years later, in 1970, Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney remade Space War for an arcade setting. The classic arcade setup was revealed to the world with the release of Computer Space. The game was put off as not very good because of how difficult it was to play. That didn't discourage Bushnell and Dabney though. This endeavor inspired them to start the Atari Company, which was the leading name in the video game industry for decades. In 1977, Atari made a huge leap for the game industry, a leap that's influence is still being felt today. They released the Atari 2600, a cartridge-based home gaming system. Its release was revolutionary. Instead of needing to go to an arcade to play games, a person can simply stay at home and play on their couch. And instead of needing to move from one setup to another to switch games, someone needed only change out the cartridge. The cartridge was replaced with a compact disc system in 1989. However, even today, handheld game systems still use cartridges instead of CDs, which are now used on most systems. The only exception to this is downloads. Now, speaking about downloads, in the early 2000s, the video game corporation Valve released the program Steam to the public. Originally, Steam was going to be used to update the game Counter-Strike due to its many bugs and need for patches. But Valve decided to make it more than that. It became a place for people to buy and download a plethora of video games onto their computers, and later other systems. Steam also featured a workshop, a place for people to download player-made mods for their favorite games for free and the community offered a place for forums and game discussions. Alright, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We haven't even cleared the 80s yet. The 1980s brought many happy faces into the gaming world. It announced the release of many early Nintendo systems and a few new Ataris as well. In 1980, a game was released that actually wasn't too huge of a deal at the time, but was still very, very popular with the crowds. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, I am talking about the one, the only, Pac-Man. Even before it was played, it was popular. About 300,000 units of the game were sold worldwide. And also, fun event in 1980, the Intellivision by Matinal was released and became the first real competitor for Atari. Alright, the timeline's getting a little bit boring. Let's take a break for a little bit and look at two popular video games throughout history. This is Space Invaders a game where you play as a tank and shoot down alien ships that are trying to invade your planet. While this might seem simple and boring to the modern day society, it was a game that people would line up to play. A lot. And this is The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. This game came out in 2011 and captivated gamers everywhere. This is the fifth installment of the very popular Elder Scrolls series. Players were amazed by the detailed landscapes, deep, delving dungeons, and the sheer limitlessness of it. And of course, the freaking dragons. And when I say dragons, I don't mean Puff the Magic Dragon. I mean dragons like Alduin the World Eater, whose return signals the end of days. Alright, that was a fun little break, but now we should probably get back on the timeline. To be honest, not much else happened in the 80s except a constant stream of new games being released into the arcades and a slower, but still constant stream of new systems being released throughout the world. In the 1990s, Sega and Sony became the lead competitors against Atari. They came up with new systems faster and were more innovative with the design. The games for these systems were also coming in ranges. People's old school arcade favorites and also the new made games just for these systems were being released on them. In 1995, Nintendo joined the race for lead company in video games with the release of the N64. 
It was a highly popular system, which many people still own today, and for most of them, it still works. The M64 didn't use the CD cartridge that most systems of the time had started to use. Instead, the M64 used large plastic cartridges with the most ignored warning in the world written on the labels. 1996 brought something new to the world, something that was a sensation for many years and the people who had one loved it, and the people who didn't had no idea why it was such a big thing. I'm talking about the Tamagotchi Virtual Pet. A small handheld system, about as pixelated as the original Pac-Man and in black and white, even though the technology to do otherwise had been invented long before. Now, I could talk for a long time about the Tamagotchis, but I'm not. Eventually, Atari and Sega stopped releasing games, and the systems became the antique systems of the olden times. The leading companies became Microsoft with its Xbox, Sony with the PlayStation, and Nintendo with the GameCube and Wii. However, there also became leading competitors in the creation of the games themselves. There's Bethesda Softworks, Ubisoft, Valve, and many others, all with amazing games. However, Nintendo decided to make its own games, and not share with anybody. So basically, if you don't have a Nintendo system or emulator, you cannot play any Nintendo. At some point in recent history, the internet made a meme out of the co-founder and CEO of Valve, Gabe Newell. Because of the amazing games his company had made, and the 90% off Steam sales his company was doing, somebody made a joke about him being the god Gaben. In the year 2017, Gabe Newell evolved like the Pokemon in the game he made after buying Nintendo. He actually became Gaben. People loved it at first. Everything was on sale like Steam games, and nobody had to count higher than three. It was peaceful under our new god. In 2018, Lord Gaben, blessed be his name, traveled into the future and brought back a video game. It was a copy of The Sims from the year 2281. For those of you that don't know, The Sims is a franchise of games that don't have too much in the way of excitement. It's like a real-life simulator. Now, I managed to get my hands on some footage of this game. I have no idea what to expect. Let's take a look and see what life 200 years in the future looks like. OH DEAR GOD WHAT THE HELL IS THAT?! Alright, so I don't like life in the future. Let's stay where we are and not invent time travel. In the year 2022, our Lord and Savior Gaben Jr. declared war on the Martian colonies. Nobody knows why, but we do know that the people of Mars fought back. By the end of the war, humanity was almost extinct. Only 10 humans remain alive in both worlds. Well, to be honest, I was planning on ending my mockumentary there. But, if you've seen my brother's mockumentary, you would know that he did a montage of people hurting themselves. So, let's make that a slight family tradition. I'm gonna change it up a little bit though. Let's do a montage of people getting hurt badly in video games. <laughs> Alright, that was fun to make. 
And that pretty much wraps up the mockumentary. But I have one last thing to say before we go. If you're ever talking to a gamer, and you call their favorite game or any game they enjoy terrible, they will hate you for the rest of their lives. Because to gamers, games are a lifestyle. And a way to escape from reality. Because reality is oftentimes not the cheerful, happy place we all wish it was. So, the best way I can describe this is that to us, video games are more than just games played by electronically manipulating images on a television screen or other display screen. To us, video games are our lives. Now, that is actually all I have to say. Good luck on finals, guys, and I'll see you later.